Hi guys, welcome to the series about sampling. In this series I want to talk about sampling, like what it is, what's the word sampling, what it means. And then I will look at two algorithms more in more detail, inverse transform sampling and rejection sampling. So just to let you know, uh, I want to keep this video as simple as possible, meaning no crazy math theory, no proofs, just intuition. And also I expect you guys to have at least some knowledge about probability and statistics, uh, especially I expect you to know what is random variable, what is the distribution of random variable, what is probability density function, what is cumulative distribution function, and what is quantile function. Yeah, just the basic, basic stuff. Uh, I divided this uh, series into three parts. First is the introduction to sampling in general, along with the inverse transform sampling algorithm. The second part is about rejection sampling itself. And the last part is about implementation of rejection sampling in Python. So I think it's definitely something to be excited about. Okay, so that's it and let's get to it. Okay, so first, what is sampling? Sampling is basically generating or simulating or drawing random numbers from some probability distribution f. So let's say that we have a random variable tomorrow temperature denoted as x, which can get these outcomes with this probability. And now someone comes and asks us or tells us give me the samples which basically means simulate one value or more values what the moral temperature could be so basically simulate some number on the x-axis according to the probability f so we simulate first sample and let's say that it's 21 degrees celsius so tomorrow could be one degree celsius the 19 degrees Celsius, 11, and so on. And we get this array of samples. And now if we do this enough times, if you repeated the sample process enough times, we uh, get these samples. We can bucketize the x-axis, the bottom axis, to buckets. And if we count a number of samples in each bucket. So here is one, here are two samples, here are four samples, five samples, three samples. We see that we get this histogram that nicely matches the underlying distribution F. So this is the idea what sampling is. So again, it's just generating random numbers according to some probability. Or the way I like to think about it, it's materializing the random variable. Okay, so another example could be simulating cointosis, which basically means uh, sampling from Bernoulli distribution, or dice rolls, very simple idea. Another case could be generating random numbers between 0 and 1, which in a language of probability means sampling from this uniform distribution. And this example is super important because we, mankind, do have a plenty of algorithms that can generate uniformly distributed numbers. And you usually see it uh, when you program each, almost every language out there does have some method for obtaining uniformly distributed numbers or numbers between zero and one. And you usually have to have to fill out the seed because these algorithms are pseudo pseudo random uh, algorithms. So meaning you just specify the seed, let's say seed 10. And if you run this algorithm 10 times with the same seed, you will get the same uniform numbers. And if someone else comes and do seed 11, he will get completely different 
uh, random numbers. But again, if he do if he does this enough times, it will always be the same. But anyway, this is for another lesson. So now the great question is: We can get these uniformly distributed numbers. And now, let's say that we don't have uh, we don't want uniformly distributed numbers, but we want numbers distributed, let's say, to exp according to exponential distribution or random distribution or any comp more complex distribution other than uniform distribution. The question is, can we utilize these uniform samples to obtain these samples from more complex distribution? In other words, uh, if we have these uniform samples and we want some more complex distributed numbers, let's say normal distributed, is there something like a converter that takes these uniform samples and convert them into this normal or um, exponential or whatever distribution numbers? And the answer is yes. And this is a list of some of these converters. Not all, uh, there are many more, for example, Gibbs sampling algorithm and so on. But in this series, I want to focus on the first two. Inverse transform sampling, the most basic sampling method out there, and the rejection sampling. Important sampling, which is by the way my favorite one, uh, we can get in another series. MCMC, very popular one, again, can be topic for another series. Okay, so let's have a look at the inverse transformation sampling. So again, let's say that we want to get some samples, let's draw it as x, from some distribution f. Can be normal distribution, can be exponential distribution, whatever. We can utilize the inverse cumulative distribution function, which is basically a quantile function, right? Quantile function. To convert the uniform samples to samples from the distribution f. And we can use something that's called probability integral theorem to get this. Here is a proof, by the way, it's very simple. And how it works. We basically have this function, like every standard uh, distribution out there, we know this function, right? So we have this function, we have the samples, and one by one, we plug it into the function, evaluate it, and we get the, the samples, and the samples that we got are distributed according to f. It was like magic, but it's very, like, theory. The theory behind it is very robust. Yep, so let's say that so we plug it first sample, u1, plug it into the function, and we get x1. u2, we got x2, u3, I don't know, to un, and you get this x3 to the xn. These are uniformly distributed, and the x's are distributed according to f. So this is just, this is super straightforward, right? We have this function, we just plug in the uniform samples and we obtain samples from the distribution f. Super, super simple. And in most cases, this is computationally efficient, meaning you just evaluate function. Sometimes the evolution is, let's say, complicated when you have some gamma functions or some crazy ugly functions hidden in this function, but in most cases it's computational efficient, there's no simulation, nothing. Problem is, if you want to use this method, you must know the quantile function or the ICDF. You must know it. For majority of the classical probability distribution functions, these are well known, so if you have normal distribution, if you have exponential distribution, Poisson distribution, Bernoulli distribution, blah blah blah, these are known, but if you have some complex distribution, then this might be a problematic. And sometimes uh, 
this function can get really ugly, meaning they s suddenly they are not that computationally efficient, or it's not that easy to evaluate them. So in this case, it also may be problems. So let's also call it tractable. Tractable and tractable. Okay. So in other theory, and let's have a look how it actually works. What's, what's the intuition behind it? So on the left side, we have a normal distribution function or the cumulative distribution function of normal distribution. On the, on the right side, we have the quantile function or the ICDF. So let's say that we want to obtain samples from the normal distribution. So X should be normal distributed. F is the, is the F, right? And and we will use the inverse transform sampling to obtain them. Uh, maybe just a reminder how to obtain cumulative distribution function. This is the probability density function of normal distribution at the bell curve. And if we just integrate it, you will get the cumulative distribution function, the basic probability theory. And now how to get the ICDF from the CDF. You basically do the standard inverse method if you recall from calculus so you draw this line and you do a mirror imaging uh, yes the mirror imaging and as you can see this line is exactly this line yeah so just a reminder okay so we won't need this anymore now and let's proceed to the sampling so first we generate some uniformly distributed numbers uh, so let's generate some uniformly distributed numbers as the on the input of the ICDF. So let's say that we generated this equally distributed. And now we just evaluate the ICDF in each of this input point. So first will be some variables that will be somewhere in here. And second, if you plug it inside the function, we will obtain this value. This one should fall somewhere in here. Damn. Somewhere in here. Here. Okay, I maybe. Oh, this might be a little messy. So let me just extrapolate this. I think it will end up something like this. This one can end up in here. This one will end up somewhere in here. Okay. So now. Uh, if you if you look at the if you look at what we obtained you see that majority of the samples is concentrated around zero and these are some like outliers so if we bucketize this axis again and do the histogram so let's say that uh, this is the first bucket second bucket third bucket fourth bucket fifth bucket uh, so here in this bucket, zero samples. Here is one sample, so we get this one. Two samples, and here let's say there are four, even though I forget to draw them. Three, one, one, yeah. Okay, so if I rotate it to 90 degrees, it should look something like this. Even though it's not perfect. Okay, and now if you compare this histogram with this probability f density function, you'll see that it's exactly it's exactly that. So if I smooth this histogram out, I will get something like that. Oh no, no, let's do it nicer. We yes, and this function and this function is actually similar. So here we had uniformly distributed samples. We plugged each one into this ICDF, and what we obtained is basically a uniformly distributed sample, a normally distributed sample. And again, if you if you look at uh, this line, and I will do here 0.1 and 0.9, you will notice that majority of the samples of the uniform samples should fall in this rectangle on the input and the output should be somewhere between 
uh, one and a half and minus one and a half. Yeah, so even though this is normally uh, uniformly distributed, most of the samples will fall in this region. And this is exactly how the normal distribution behave. So this is the intuition behind uh, ICDF. I hope it's clear. I think it works very nicely and it's easy to understand. And again, you, we, we, you just need this function and everything is, is ready to go. Great. But then uh, you can have something like this. Let's say this is a probability distribution function of some really, it's really ugly. And now the question is, what is the inverse cumulative distribution function? Because I need this in order to obtain samples. And the answer is, I don't know. And it's maybe quite difficult to actually obtain this one, right? Maybe quite tedious to actually evaluate, no, not evaluate it, but even obtain what it looks like. And this is just 1D. Let's imagine that now we, we are in 3D. So it's X, Y, Z. And suddenly, uh, what, what is the quantile function of this distribution in 3D or 2D on 4D? It's like even more question marks. And in this case, this is a great example where the rejection sampling comes to rescue. So in the next video, we will look at what rejection sampling is and how it works or how it can deal with this ugliness. So I hope guys you enjoyed this video and see you next time.